I'm in beautiful Hot Springs, Arkansas, and although I'm about to celebrate my family reunion, I had to pause because I wanted to make sure every one of you knew about this exciting new study. They said keto couldn't be safe for type 1 diabetes. They warned of ketoacidosis, nutrient deficiencies, and even bone loss. But what if I told you that someone's been on a ketogenic diet for 10 years, and not only did it work, it transformed their lives. Hello, it's Dr. Hampton here. And as a doctor who specializes in obesity and metabolic health, and more personally, as a husband to a woman living with type 1 diabetes, this study means a lot to me. Because when we made the decision to use a low-carb, high-fat approach in our own home, it wasn't because we were following a trend. It was because we believed in a root cause approach to chronic disease. And now, we finally have long-term clinical evidence to support that decision. So if you or someone Someone you love is living with type 1 diabetes or if you're a clinician open to fresh insights stick around what you'll learn in the next few minutes could shift your entire perspective on diabetes management and to be honest that applies to both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and please do me a favor share this video there's still a lot of skepticism out there and often is rooted in this belief that we don't have the science. But today, I'm going to show you we absolutely do. Let's set the stage. Right now, fewer than 1% of people with type 1 diabetes achieve normal glycemic control. That's a hemoglobin A1C of 5.7% and only about 20% meet the standard target of 7%. We've accepted these outcomes as normal, but they're not optimal, and the consequences are real. Cardiovascular disease, neuropathy, kidney damage, vision loss, you name it. One major contributor, the very treatment we use to manage the disease, insulin. Now, I'm not saying insulin isn't necessary, it is. But when we inject insulin subcutaneously, we bypass the liver. And when we pair that with a high carb diet, we create something called inatrogenic hyperinsulinemia. Simply put, the body ends up flooding with insulin. And over time, that drives insulin resistance, weight gain, and inflammation. Not exactly a recipe for longevity. Enter the ketogenic diet, a way of eating that dramatically reduces carbs, usually to about 50 grams a day or less, while emphasizing fat for fuel. And for type 1s, this approach has the potential to reduce insulin needs, flatten glucose spikes, and improve energy and quality of life. But is it safe? Is it sustainable? And can it actually work long term? That's why this study is so exciting. It's a detailed 10-year case report published in a peer-reviewed journal tracking a male patient with type 1 diabetes who adopted a ketogenic diet in his early 20s after following ADA guidelines for seven years. And when I say detailed, I mean it. This wasn't just a what did you eat yesterday kind of study. They tracked his food using a chronometer. They monitored ketones, insulin, CGM data, thyroid panels, bone density, kidney function, you name it. It's rare to get this much comprehensive data over this much time. So what happened? Let's start with glycemic control. Before keto, his A1C hovered around 6.8%. Within three months of switching, it dropped to 5.6%. And for the next 10 years, it averaged 5.5%. That alone puts him in a top 1% of type 1s. But it gets better. A recent 60-day CGM analysis showed a medium glucose of 98 milligrams per deciliter. That's 90% of time in range and 0% above 180. Not a single moment above 250. And and most impressively, not one episode of hypoglycemia that required medical intervention. He maintained full hypoglycemic awareness. That's the gold standard for safety. Next, let's talk insulin. His daily total dose dropped by 43% from 67 international units to 38 international units. His bolus insulin, the stuff we use to cover carbs, dropped from 27 units to just six. His insulin became mostly basal with minimal mealtime corrections needed. That's the power of minimizing carbohydrate intake. The less sugar you eat, the less insulin you'll need. And remember, he wasn't losing weight to make this happen. His body composition, 
waist to hip ratio and lean mass stayed stable for a decade. His calories were nearly the same too. This was about what he was eating, not how much. Now let's get to the part that skeptics love to point out, safety concerns. Did his cholesterol go up? Yes, it rose from 69 to 129 milligrams per deciliter. But that's where context matters. His triglycerides remained low. HDL stayed high. And most importantly, his small dense LDL particles, those really sticky ones that contribute most to plaque buildup, stayed well within the normal range. So while the total LDL increased, the type of LDL didn't raise red flags. This matches what we've seen in other low carb studies. Pattern A dominance. Large buoyant particles that don't penetrate arterial walls easily. What about the other concerns? Thyroid function, normal. Kidney function, normal. Bone mineral density, unchanged. Ketoacidosis, none in 10 years. Hypoglycemia requiring help, zero. That's right, despite being in nutritional ketosis for a decade, there were no diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA events. And he spent less than 10% of his time below 70 milligrams per deciliter, with zero time below 54. He was in tighter control than most people without diabetes. So what does this mean? It means a well-formulated ketogenic diet can be both safe and effective for people with type 1 diabetes. It can normalize blood sugar, it can reduce insulin needs, and it can be done without sacrificing bone health, thyroid health, or kidney performance. Now, I want to be clear, this is a case study. It's not a randomized controlled trial. It's not generalizable to every person, but it is compelling. And it adds to a growing body of evidence that challenges the outdated idea that type ones must eat high carb diets to stay safe. For my wife and the many patients I care for with type one diabetes, this isn't just a theoretical debate. This is about quality of life. This is about options. This is about letting people know that there's another way, a way that puts them in control. And this is where we need your help. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and comment. Share it with a loved one. Share it with your doctor. Share it with your diabetes support group. Because for far too long, we've been told there's only one way to manage type one diabetes. But now we know better. Now we have science that speaks for itself. And if you're curious about how low carb, high fat diets affect things like heart disease, metabolic health, and even mental clarity, I've got more videos breaking all that down. Check out the description and playlist below for more links. Let's keep asking better questions. Let's keep demanding better answers. And let's keep protecting our nest by focusing on nutrition, exercise, more sleep, less stress, and protecting our thoughts because that's how we build real health. Now I'm off to finish celebrating my family reunion, but I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.